We have the ability to heal. We have the ability to grow and to learn and say, I'm having a bad day. Come hug me, please, when you get a chance. It's not a demand. It's a request. Assalamu alaikum, peace. It's Fatima, Coach Fatima, one third of Outstanding Personal Relationships and co author of the new book, Let's Talk Polygyny Uncensored. In this video, let's address another topic. And that topic is if you're in polygyny, especially, is to stop trying to make your husband your wife. What does that mean? That means that we have to understand as women or wives in polygyny that our husbands are not going to nurture us all the way through polygyny. Support us, yes, in the way that men do, yes. Listen to us so that they can understand what it's like for us or what we're going through or what our concerns are, yes. They can do that because men have the ability to feel, to hear, to sense. They do it in a different way than women do. It doesn't mean their way is wrong, though. That's one thing I had to personally learn. I said, you know what? I feel like laying out on this floor crying for the end of time. And I feel like he need to hold my hand while I am doing that. Um, and then he needs to just let me do that and then be here while I'm doing it. Drop everything when I'm doing it. Da da da. da. No, that's not how that works. Sometimes, many times, correction. Many times you have to pick yourself up on those days that are challenging. I'll give an example. I was probably having one of the worst days in polygyny. This is in like year one. This was year one. This year, if I could blow a year off the map, that would be the one I would, I would get rid of her. Anywho, I have a really dear friend of mine. She's been friends with me for about 22 years. And we come from two different backgrounds, two different Two different backgrounds. She's not a brown girl. She's not a woman of color. She's not black. And we came from, we were both reverts to Islam. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so mad at him. I, I just want, but I really need a hug. She was on the phone because she lived in a neighboring city. And she goes, Fatima, if you want to hug your husband, go hug him. <laughs> it don't deprive yourself of a hug because you need it. Okay, text to them. I'm like, I need a hug. You know, it's that you're going to cry when you get in the car moment. And if you know who that, what movie that's from, let us know in the comments. But she said that to me. And I reached out to him and I said, I need a hug when you get a moment. And it was such a blessing that um, my co-wife's house was not far. And before I knew it was under an hour, he was there giving me a really good hug. Because she was like, why are you trying to act like you're not married to your husband and you married to him? If you need a hug, then then he can provide you with a hug. Get one then. Dang. <laughs> so I love that about her because, I, you know, I love people that love me enough to tell me the truth. I love me enough to say, look, you acting a fool. Look, don't do that. Stop. You know, wait. Don't react like that. Here's why you shouldn't. You know, embrace love. You should act like you married when you still are. You know, those things like those beautiful reminders. Now, I could have said, well, I don't like your tone. I don't need to say that to her. She was right. She was right to get frustrated with me because why are you acting like you can't ask him for a hug no more? And I hugged him. And I remember I was in tears and I said, oh, I'm mad at you. He just went on and hugged me. He wasn't like, shh, I know. He didn't do that. <laughs> he didn't do that. He listened. Because sometimes women don't need you to fix them. They just need you to listen. And maybe say it'll be okay. But with that being said, our husbands are not to sit there and hold our hand like we are a child. We are not children. 
We have the ability to heal. We have the ability to grow and to learn and say, I'm having a bad day. Come hug me, please, when you get a chance. It's not a demand. It's a request. Men don't respond well to demanding behavior. You might think you checking somebody. You might think, you know, you drawing him closer. You running some. You're not. You're not. For those who it applies to, I'm talking to you. If it don't apply to you, let it fly. Don't apply, let it fly. Don't worry about it. But I'm telling you, if you want to build a closeness, you don't get to check a grown man. You don't get to tell him what he can't do, what he can do. Request. Voice your concern. He's not a woman. He's a man. We're built different. And that's great because I like being built this way. I love it. The best thing I'll ever be is a woman that is a student, that's teachable, coachable, humble, and is confident that I have the ability to learn and I have the ability to see another perspective. I have the ability to forgive. I have the ability to understand that my husband is not a woman. He is not my wife. And I didn't get married to have a wife and a husband. I got married to have a husband. I don't want a husband that acts like a wife. I want a husband that's a husband. Okay. So it's very important to, to understand this just because they don't respond the way that we would as women doesn't mean the response is wrong. It's just how men do it. I'm married to an introvert. He shows love through actions, through service, through gifts, through those non, a lot of nonverbal ways. You know, I have daughters that are introverts. It's all nonverbal. They don't go, you know what, Umi, I love you so much. You mean the world to me. I'm so grateful to have you in my life. They'll write it down. They'll text it. They'll send flowers, they'll give cards, they'll give lots of hugs, they'll say they love me. But it's not this gushing over me. And they're girls. But I understand their personalities are different. So I really understand the fact that men do not operate as women do. So sometimes we think and they're doing something to us, they ain't even thought about it. Completely unintentional, completely innocent. I ain't talking about these clowns that play in polygyny. I'm not talking about these clowns that call themselves kings and they're really jesters and they preying on women and they're trying to pick women like daisies. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about kings. Do we worship them? No. It's a term of endearment. Kings move different. Just want to give you all a heads up on my group coaching. I'm so excited about it. So many of you have asked about it. And if you're on a wait list, make sure that you sign up to be on my wait list for group coaching by visiting coachfatima.com to register for that. It's so exciting. I have so many different things to share with you all. If you want to level up and meet the champion within, please join and become a part of the wait list. I'll see you guys soon. Assalamu alaikum. Peace. They move in a way that is healthy, even though they're still learning. That doesn't mean they can't make a mistake, though. That doesn't mean they can't have this thing where they misread a room or an emotion. That's why clear, concise communication matters to men, because then they can deal with it. They can't deal with the eye rollage. This, he ought to know what's wrong with me. Here he comes. They don't know what to do with that other than leave it alone, other than get away from it, other than you going to get met with, is there an issue? Do you see? So these microaggressions, they don't do well with them. Now, if they don't do well with aggression, they damn sure don't do well with microaggression. They don't do well with aggressive behavior, passive aggressive behaviors and different things like that. It is best to if, even if you got to write a note that, you know, there's some things that are going on with me. 
And I want you to be aware so you know what's going on. So you do not have to guess. So you do not have to guess. I love telling the truth. I love telling the truth because then it puts us on equal footing. It allows us to say, okay, how can I see men like to be of service, period. They like to be of service. They like to be needed. They like to help us. They want to know what's going on so that they can make it either go away or make a lesson a blow. Now they can't take everything from us and that they can take away all the pain and they can help and they can do all this stuff. If they could do all that stuff, they would do it. So they would not have to hear so many complaints. See, voicing a concern and having multiple complaints thrown at you is two different things. If you, if you text your husband, you say, you know, I have multiple complaints to lodge. You better get here versus I have some concerns. Can you fit some time in your schedule so we could sit down and talk for about an hour? Not to the, not talk to the end of time because they got tons of stuff to do. Tons of stuff. And, and a part of loving a man, loving a woman or a king, loving a queen is that he doesn't dump all that on her and he deals with it. So a lot of it, we don't even know what we don't even know what they're dealing with. We have no idea. And that's a good thing. It's a mercy. We don't need to know everything. I, that's one thing I learned is I don't want to know everything and I wouldn't want to be a husband. I can't even fathom that. I can't even fathom the pressure of it. And they go, well, Coach Fatsman, he signed up for it. He wanted to do. Yeah, we sign up for a lot of stuff we, we, we want to do. And then we find out it's not as easy as we thought, but we're still willing to sacrifice and learn so that we can become better. I love that Jim Rohn quote. Don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. Shout out to Jimmy Rohn. I love him. He passed on, but he was, he, he stayed dropping gems. Motivational speaker. He dropped gems all the time. And I was like, Ooh, that one hit hard. I said, okay, this is not easy for me. I said, well, let me go over and be better. It took a lot. I'm still learning. But one thing I learned on my journey is that my husband is not my wife. He's my husband. He's a man, a male human adult. And I don't get to mother him and I don't get to tell him what to do. And I don't want to. I, don't, I have no desire in me to tell a grown man what to do or how to be or when he should and get up. You know, I, you know, I don't want to have a husband that I say jump and he says how high. Remember, I told you I wasn't on a live. I said I ain't never seen a man say I'm going to go get my wife. I've seen many wives say I got something for you. I'm going to go get my husband. You know why I know it? Because I'm one of them. Man wanted to confront me. He wanted to talk to me with his chest. And I just looked at him. I said, okay, I got something for you. I ain't say nothing else to him. The next thing he, next time he looked up, Coach Nadir was walking through the door. He, she, she, you know, the tune got changed then. Then the tune got changed. It wasn't all that rah, rah. So yeah, I didn't have no desire to stand up toe to toe with no man and argue because honey, I, I, I'm not going to do that. So with that being said, I just want, <laughs> wanted everyone to understand that just because our husbands don't do things like we do them doesn't mean their way is wrong. And we don't have the desire for them to fix everything. The pressure that that places on a man's shoulders is incredible. And if you keep saying, fix me, fix me, fix me, people get tired. It's exhausting. It's draining. Because if they could fix you, they would fix you. They, they don't have the ability. And that's, they're not supposed to have the ability to let the world walk, revolve around you. Nothing else is going on but what you're going through. That's not how the world works. That's not how relationships work. That is absolutely not how polygyny works. It'll, it'll be unsuccessful. But we're talking about best practices for best results. So <laughs> I hope you guys, with that being said, I hope you guys got some gems out of this video. I enjoy doing it. I always do because, you know, OPR is here to help 
people that don't have a voice, that don't see a, a, a means to a good end. And we love this work. This is something that we did, decided to do and to dedicate our time to do because we remember what it was like when we didn't have this, when we didn't have anywhere to go or no one to talk to. So with that being said, uh, what we're going to leave in the comments Winning at polygyny. Put that in the comments, guys. Winning at polygyny, okay? Uh, make sure you guys are following us, commenting, liking, and subscribing, and hit the notification bell so that you guys are notified every time we upload a video. And make sure you are also following us on our social medias. On IG, we're Outstanding Relationships. And on YouTube and Facebook, we're Outstanding Personal Relationships. So, again... Hope you guys got some gems. For those of you that are new, I'm Coach Fatima. I will see you guys in the next one. But before I do, I'm going to leave you with a little GLC. Make sure you're growing intentionally, loving fearlessly, and connecting on a higher level every single day. I will see you in the next one. Assalamu alaikum. Peace. Here are three ways I'll say the first relationships can help you. Make sure you guys are following us on our social medias at Outstanding Personal Relationships on YouTube and Facebook and on IG at Outstanding Relationships. And make sure you sign up for our email list and you can actually email us at support at Outstanding Personal Relationships where you will get updates on our new book, Let's Talk Polygyny Uncensored, as well as exclusive access to our lives and bonuses. Absolutely. If you're looking for more Polygyny education, make sure you visit polygamymasterclass.com. Now, if you're looking for coaching or counseling with either Coach Fatima or Coach Nyla, you can find them at... Make sure you visit me at coachfatima.com. And myself at coachnyla.com. That's how we can help you. Stone Lake. Peace. Peace.